what are you here for? And I tell them the exact story about the, the 10 milligram prescription I get every month about Dr. Sanders and our relationship about the 7.5 milligram Vicodins. He wrote me CVS, not letting me pick it up. And, uh, and he said, so you're here for pain management. And I go, yes, yes, I am. And he goes, all right, well, have you been vaccinated? And I'm like, no, like, I'm, you know, what does that have anything to do with this? All right, Jesse on fire. Welcome back to the channel. Now we're going to talk about the Stefan Bonner situation again. And I do a lot of different types of videos on this channel. I realize, like I do straight up satire. I do some serious videos. I do other that are kind of like halfway in between. This is one of those like serious videos because I just watched the, the interview that Stefan Bonner did where he was laid out in his house and kind of giving his side of the story. I had actually heard that he had done that on Chael's channel and I didn't watch it, uh, but I just watched one that he did on uh, MMA Hour or something, I don't know. Uh, I'll probably end up showing some of it uh, once I start editing this video together, but like everything that he said in the video both validated what I said in the first video, but added an entire other layer to this situation that I think is super important to talk about because I just, it's everywhere you look. And that has to do with his status taking one of these or, you know, taking two of these, right? So I'm gonna try to do this video in a way where I don't end up having to go to YouTube and go, can you review this video? Cause I definitely was not sharing misinformation. It's even say certain words right now. It'll trigger this like where they'll just block your monetization and then you have to go to them, have a menu. It's just a pain in the balls. I'm gonna to try to avoid it. So if you can't figure out what I'm talking about here where you're getting mandated to do this, which we'll refer to as a jab, then come on. So. So anyway, we'll talk about all that. Now, if you like the content, subscribe and ring the bell. Like I said in my last video, I got 35,000, or surpassed the 35,000 subscriber mark. I appreciate your guys' ongoing support very much. Thank you guys. Uh, and sometimes I try to just take on like real issues on this channel besides just MMA. On my other channel, Jesse on Everything, this is all I talk about is stuff like this. Uh, you know, big macro stuff or just specific stories I think are interesting, but nonetheless, this gives us the opportunity to do it on this channel also. Okay, so here's the deal. So on the first video that I did about Stefan Bonner, I said immediately, I was watching the, the, the series of videos that he did and I immediately was like, this is a person who's looking for opioids. I mean, he, he wasn't, he didn't directly say it in that, in that series of videos, but he mentioned oxycodone immediate, like inside of like the first video like five, you know, five or 10 seconds in and I'm like, okay, so I know what's going on here. He says he's injured. He mentioned something about oxycodone being a blocker. He's in there looking for pills, of course, right? Like, and his face, he looked frantic. Like, I, I just knew, like I knew exactly what was going on there. His goal is to come out of there with pain medication. And I've been in a situation, now I did a live, I did a live stream where I talked about like my history with that stuff. And I'll just re-go over one critical point of that situation because it's relevant here because there are two types of situations where you would frantically go to a doctor and literally beg them for pain meds. One is you're an addict and if you run out, you are in a heap of trouble because you're gonna go through withdrawal, okay? So that's option one. Option two is you're in such agonizing pain that you actually can barely even think straight and you are, you're almost ready to like grab a doctor and throw him against the wall and go, do you have any idea how much pain I'm in? Write me a script, I'm, you know? And so I've actually never done that in, I've never done the first one where it's like, oh my gosh, if I'm not successful here, then I'm going to, you know, go through withdrawal. Uh, not because I had never been in a situation like that, I just, for whatever reason, that just never happened to me. But the second one I had gone through because, so the first time that I ever like took pills for an extended period of time was just like right after I was out of college. And it was a maybe 10 month period where I just, it's a long story, but back then there was this internet, this internet loophole where you could just get as many as you, you know, you do this like on like this phone consultation and then they would just FedEx you like Norco's like it was nothing, you know, it's just so crazy to even think about that that was a thing then. But I'll tell you this, a lot of people in the future now, uh, you know, young kids will be like, yeah, I mean, I, I like Vicodin, but you know, it's whatever. And they don't realize all you, the difference between you and a serious pill addict 
The only difference between you and that version of yourself is a steady supply of them. Like your ability to get them whenever you want, that's the only thing differentiating this version of you from this version of you. And I learned that the hard way, right? And when I quit, I didn't take, I, I wouldn't even look at a pain pill for four or five years. I mean, just never, just never, like under any certain, I could have taken a, I could have gotten in a bathtub and had them just dump it full of pills. I wouldn't have taken one in a million years. And then I had an incident where I got an infection in my eye, a pseudomonas infection that felt like someone was taking razor blades and just slowly slicing through my eyeball. It hurt so bad. Like it hurt so bad that I literally basically grabbed a doctor and like yelled in their face and they ended up writing me a script. And then that right there, if, you know, look, uh, if you're wired to get hooked on pills and then you take pills, the, your body doesn't care that you were just trying to, you know, you know, like block pain. You're going to get hooked on them again very, very quickly. And so I had to deal with it again. But in that moment, when I was in that much pain, I look, I mean, I don't know if I look like, you know, Stefan Bonner looks, he looks strung out to me, you know, like, I'm sure I didn't look like that, but I understand that frantic, like, dude, give me a script. Cause that's how he described that incident. And we'll get to that. So I'm just at least prefacing this that I can empathize with that, that side of the story. So anyway, so basically in his interview, he basically said that what had happened was he has been on pain meds for a long period of time for his knee, for his elbow. I mean, look, like I don't doubt that this guy's dealing with a lot of pain. And candidly, one of the things that came out of me watching that interview was, was this kind of like renewed viewpoint that I used to have pretty strongly that there is a level of pain that people deal with where it's like, dude, just give them pain meds. Who cares? You know, like if they want to live as an addict, who cares? You know what I mean? Like seriously, if the options for a person who's in that much pain are live in a cloud of opioid induced bliss fog or deal with debilitating pain all the time, just give it to them. You know, I mean, if there was a way to figure out like this person because it's all about like, what are your options? Like, what are, what are your two options? Okay, so like for a person like me, as an example, if I go in there, I go, oh, geez, Louise, my elbow hurts so bad. Can you write me a script for something? And they're like, sure. And then I keep going in year after year, just like my elbow. And they just pound out pills. And it's like, okay, well, what would happen if you didn't have access to those pills? It'd be like, I would be an incredibly high functioning person who's a better man in every way. <laughs> like in that case, yeah. It's probably not ideal for you to just vomit pills on me. But if someone, if, if Stefan is, as he has presented himself in this interview, where he is in utterly debilitating pain all the time, if his options are, you can either have him kind of like, yeah, I'm really enjoying this, you know, this movie's great, man. Now, yeah, and now later I get to just kind of ignore my pain and go participate in something I wouldn't be able to do otherwise, you know, whatever. Or I, he's laid up and can't move, like, just let him do the drugs, man. Like, just let him do the drugs. I don't, anyway. So, so he had validated that he's basically been taking pain meds for a very long period of time. And he participates in, uh, in you know, like WWE type wrestling stuff. Like, I apologize. I am, no, that is a world I'd know nothing about. Like the like, uh, you know, pro wrestling stuff. But apparently he was participating. He he did some jump off the ropes. He injured himself. He fractured his vertebrae and he went to his normal doctor and the doctor wrote him a script for seven and a half milligram Vicodin. He took it to the, to the pharmacy. They wouldn't fill it for him without validation from his doctor that, you know, that they actually wrote the script. So he's like, okay, fine, call him. So they call the, the doctor, he comes back the next day, they're all, yeah, no, I don't know, we still can't fill it. He's like, dude, what are you talking about? So basically what happened was between the time, this is his story, between the time when the doctor, his doctor, wrote him a script for this pain medication and when he was supposed to be able to pick it up, the pharmacy had contacted his doctor and his doctor had basically not said, yeah, go ahead and fill it. And you gotta understand, like, the reason this could completely be true where the doctor just, you know, all of a sudden kind of changed his mind is you have to understand the, the new environment in the opioid crisis. Okay. Like you used to be able to just write a billion opioids to anyone, anytime, anywhere, no matter what. And you want to know what the difference then was, was the pharma companies were, were the, you know, the pharma companies that were like the good pharma companies, you know, like 
kind of like what you're seeing now is, you know, they, they, they can literally control policy to where like they made the whole world. Like it was like, it was, it was unethical for someone to come in asking you for opioids and you not write the script for Oxycontin. Like they literally got the whole medical community to that, to, to that point, right? Like where if you don't write a person's script, you're an unethical doctor. And then now after the opioid crisis, now if a doctor is writing scripts, the pharmacy and the, and the DEA and everybody will call and be like, hey, why are you writing all these scripts, man? Huh? Why are you writing all these scripts? It's li I mean, literally you went from if you don't do it, you're unethical to like, hey man, if you write too many of these, we'll throw you in fucking jail and we'll take away your license, literally. So the pharmacy hits up the doctor. I would imagine it sounds something like this, like, hey, so you know, you've been writing a lot of opioid prescriptions to this particular gentleman. Can you explain yourself? Uh, are you sure you want to fill this? And he probably changed his mind or something. You know what I mean? Like, and then so Stefan can't get his pills. And uh, let me tell you for sure, for sure, eh, maybe not for sure. Let me speculate what was going on on Stefan's side, which is he has a certain amount of pills for a certain amount of time. As soon as he got that script, he's banking on it, okay? He's banking on that script coming through because he got it from a doctor. And so, you know, the amount that he has over here, all of a sudden, he doesn't need to worry about stretching that out. You know, it's like he was worried. That's why he went to the doctor. He doesn't have to stretch it out anymore. He's got, he's got this one coming. Awesome. So he can start taking these. And then, so his window of how long they're going to last is closing because he thinks he's going to be able to get those. And then the pharmacy refuses to fill them. So then he goes to the, he goes to the ER for his fractured back. The whole entire thing is like my fractured back, the, the prescription that you guys wrote me for my elbow and knee is not doing anything for the pain. It's not enough. Okay. This fractured back is a whole different animal. I need more. Like I need, I need higher strength. That's the whole reason that he went to the original doctor. So he goes to the ER and he's trying to explain to them what's going on. Okay, so that's the context for why he's there, which validates every single thing that I said in the first video, right? Except again, I, you know, I don't know how I feel about a person who's in chronic pain. Like maybe, maybe you should just give him the pain meds. Like, you know, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. But anyway, the other part of this that we need to discuss is the other thing, which is Stefan goes in there and basically what he's saying is that when the hospital, okay, so first of all, they said to him, so you're looking for pain management, okay? Like that's what the doctor said to him, okay? So let me just translate that into doctor talk for you, okay? So you're looking for pain management means you're seeking opioids, right? So if they say, oh, so you're here for pain management, what they're saying is, oh, so you're here for, to try to get me to write you a script for opioids, that's, that's what you're doing. And again, I have a serious fucking problem with how this has evolved from, you know, oh yeah, write all the scripts you want to all of a sudden the, the remnants of that now where people are, you know, they, they want or need their opioids and now they come and they're like, oh geez, look at this fucking guy. Oh, you're here for some pills guy. You're here from pills, you sniveling drug addict. Fuck you. Honestly. And you're like, dude. I'm not saying that they need to write every script, but like, oh, so you're here for pain management? <laughs> Jeez, okay, great. I mean, I do understand they probably see a thousand people like that every week, but whatever. So anyway, so they say that to him. Then they ask him about his, his jab status, right? So, uh, so have you taken the jab? Uh, and Stefan goes into some, some tirade with them about why they're, you know, because they're like, look, we need, to, we need to move you out. You need to, we need to treat other people. And Stefan says something to the effect of, it's not my fault that your ER is full of people who are dying from taking the jab, okay? So, uh, yeah. So that's what he said to them, okay? He said that he thinks that the ER is full of people who are sick and dying because they took the mandated jab. Now, I don't know anything about why people are in the ER other than what I'm told on the news. I can tell you this for 100% sure. A comment like that to a doctor who's a believer in the jabs is going to put you in a category that's 100 times worse than, hey, I'm here looking for drugs. Okay, like that, th those two things combined are going to put you in a box that's like, so I guess we could just roll this guy out of the back in a wheelbarrow and just dump him in a ditch and see how he gets home with his broken vertebrae. Hey, hey little guy, why don't you crawl home with your broken vertebrae? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep spewing that misinformation guy. Okay, crawl your little ass home, crawl home. He doesn't deserve our care. So basically that's, that's Stefan's side of the story was that as soon as they found out that he didn't have this, but the way that he told that story I can tell you it's not just what his status was. It's that he said to them, it's not my fault 
that your ER is full of people who are sent here from taking that, like to them, to the medical community, that's like the pinnacle of misinformation around this. And I'm not, you know, look like, I am not, anybody who really watches my content, I am not the one to talk about this, this uh, particular topic with. So I'm not going to talk about it. I can only talk about what a doctor, how a doctor would react to that. So at that point, that's when the video starts because Stefan realizes they're not gonna write him a script. Not only are they not gonna write him a script, they're not even gonna treat him. Like they're just gonna, they're not gonna do anything. And so he, that's when he starts recording. It's because he thinks he's documenting like basically like unethical medicine, which he probably, you know, it's arguable that maybe that's exactly what he was documenting to be perfectly honest, you know? Like, would I write him a script? I have no idea. I'm not a doctor, I don't know, okay? Like, I just don't know. If I could look at x-rays and I saw that he had a fractured vertebrae, I probably would, you know, but I don't know. But I can tell you this, uh, you know, the Stefan basically even told in his story, they started swinging his crutches around at security and stuff like, I don't know. I mean, look at, look at this from the perspective of the doctors and the medical staff. Like, they're like, this is a, uh, this is a drug addicted, anti-jabber you know what i mean like and so they think he's like the scum of the earth and so they're going to treat him as such which is fucked up okay like this is america you can have whatever opinion you want now if he was i don't know man like it's, i just don't <laughs> this like class system based on your beliefs and things is is just like the worst dredge of the propaganda war. It's like, I, and look, I'm not saying that Stefan's even in the realm of correct. What I'm saying is like, if you're a doctor, your medical staff, you're not like, that's not your position in the world is to like, to judge people based on their beliefs. You're there to fix sick people. That's your fucking job, okay? Like outside of that, no one fucking cares what you think, okay? Unless it has something to do with this, like, so you could say, and here's the thing, everyone should care what a doctor thinks about this particular topic. Like, should you do this or should you not do that, right? Like everyone should care about that because those are the people who you should be listening to. And that applies across the board, right? So you pick a doctor that you trust, you go talk to them, and then they tell you what you should do and you should probably listen to them if you trust their opinion, okay? But this whole thing where they're like the arbiters of what is an acceptable opinion to have. And then like, if you're on the wrong side of this or that, then they can just, you know, they put you in some different class of human. It's fucking ridiculous, okay? Again, this is America. We're free to put ourselves in danger if we want, you know? And this idea that, that not doing this puts other people in danger is the exact opposite of what's true. And that is just fucking easily verifiable across any any platform that you want. Go talk to anyone. I've seen videos of, you know, the, the king of the kings who's on camera all day long, who validated that whether you've taken the jab or not, the load that you carry is identical. Now, if you're asymptomatic, what, like, do you think that you're more or less likely to give it to other people? Okay. If you're sick, you stay home. If you're not, you run around. You know what they call that? A super esser, okay? Like this is just common sense and I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying that like this, this idea that there's only, I just can't dude. I can't, I can't, okay? I can't with people. Do it or don't, you know? But don't, don't treat people like they're like second class citizens if they chose not to, even if it's based on idiotic stuff. You guys see what Nicki Minaj said about this? She said she's not doing it because her cousin said he got erectile dysfunction from it. Okay, yeah, okay. But she's free to be stupid. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying her not getting it is stupid. I'm saying thinking that, you know, the guy got ED from it, that seems pretty stupid, you know? Although, you know, it might be a side effect that people don't really talk about. It, it does deal with blood flow, who knows? Maybe it is true. Maybe a blood clot in his dick, who knows? Anyway, I don't really know what my point is here other than that I do believe Stefan Bonnert's version of events, actually. I believe him. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't go against anything I said in the first video. So anyway, I don't know what I'm talking about. That's what I got. Subscribe to the channel, ring the bell or unsubscribe if you don't like my fucking opinions. I don't care. Peace.